everyone, welcome to 4-8. Today we are talking about ASA and AAS congruence. Hopefully you have an idea of what that means now. In section 4-7 we talked about side, side, side and side, angle, side. So you can see that today we're working with things that have two angles instead of two sides. So ASA is going to represent angle, side, angle. So what this tells us is if two angles and the side between them is congruent to another triangle, then the triangles, I'm running out of room, triangles are congruent to each other. So in other words, if you take a look in this picture, if this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here. And the side here and here is congruent and the angle on the other side. So you can see that there is two angles that are congruent and a side in between them. If you get a pattern like this, angle, side, angle, these two triangles are going to be congruent to each other. Angle, angle, side is very similar, but this time it's two angles and a side not interior. And if this is congruent, congruent, then the triangles are congruent. So taking a look at how this might look, Again, maybe this angle and this angle are congruent to each other like we had in the first one, but instead of it being the side in the middle, maybe it's this side on the bottom. You can see that I have angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side is my setup. So it could look like that as well to prove congruence. So taking a look at the examples, our examples today are going to use this angle, angle, side or this angle, side, angle to prove it. I have this problem that says given JK is parallel to LM. So let's go ahead and put that in our picture. That's the first thing I want to make sure I do as I'm going. JK is parallel to LM. So I put these little arrows in the middle to signify that. And JL is parallel to KM. So we need to put parallelness on this too. If I only put one arrow, well, that would mean this line and this line are parallel. We can't have that. They're not parallel to each other because they intersect with each other. So here I'm going to put two arrows to signify that these two parallel lines are a different set of parallel lines than these two. But now I can see that the left and the right are parallel and the top and the bottom are parallel. Well, look at your first, your first statement. Boom, given, done. I know that's the factual reason as to why those are written like that. Well, from there, they started building from that. The first thing that we came up with is that JKL is congruent to MLK. Notice that we wrote it in that order based off our, our corresponding parts being written correctly. J, K, L, M, L, K. Well, this right here, if I have two parallel lines right here and right here, you can see that what's being created right there, and I'm going to highlight these two so you can see it a little bit clearer. Right here, this is two lines that are parallel being cut by a transversal. That is a throwback to chapter 3. We are looking at a pair of alternate interior angles. So alternate interior angles. I got it real close together. I'm sorry. Alternate interior angles. That's better. So they are a pair of alternate interior angles, which is why they are congruent to each other. Likewise, you can see that there's a pair of parallel lines on the top and the bottom too. So what's going to end up happening is JLK and MKL are also going to be congruent to each other. And it's the same exact reason. They are a pair of alternate interior angles, this time being formed with the top and the bottom side of these two triangles. The top and the bottom are parallel, causing this angle and this angle to be the interior pair that are alternate sides. What I kind of recognize is anytime you see the Z shape or this Z shape made by parallel lines, the corners of the Z are going to be alternate interior angles. It's a good rule to remember because it'll make it easier to spot those in these types of problems. 
The last thing on here is KL is congruent to KL. We've used that one a couple times now. Whenever this happens that KL is congruent to KL, we know that's the reflexive property. It's a shared side, so we know that shared side says to us that those two things are congruent to each other. And you can see what happens now. In the bottom triangle, I have A, S, A. And in the top triangle, I have A, S, A. So since they both line up by angle, side, angle, these two triangles are congruent to each other. So right here, I will put angle, side, angle, congruence to prove them. I know those triangles are congruent because angle, side, angle says they are. All right, taking a look at example two. Example two is a little bit more challenging because they want us to fill it in ourselves. In example two, the first thing I have is that given angle ABC is congruent to angle CED. So the first thing I'm going to write in my proof is angle ABC is congruent to angle CED. And we're obviously going to make sure we put that in our picture. ABC is this top angle, which means it goes with CED, which is this top angle. And we know that's true because it's given given to us. We know that because of the given. It looks like they told us a few more things as well in my given, and I really didn't plan ahead to make sure if I need all these steps written out as separate givens. So we're going to write out separate givens. I may get to the end and realize I need more space. We'll find out. So AB is parallel to CE is my next thing. So AB and CE are parallel. I'm going to put that in this pink color right here. So AB is parallel to CE. AB is parallel to CE. Again, that's my other given. And last in my given, I have that C is the midpoint of segment AD. Again, given. That was a lot of givens that were given to me there. So C is in the middle of AD. Well, I know something then. If C is in the middle of AD, I know that AC, I want to put that in blue actually, sorry, AC and CD have to be congruent to each other. I know that because that's what midpoint means. Midpoint means if this is in the middle, it separates this into two equal parts. So AC is congruent to, and I want to make sure I correspond to this, it looks like AC since this is the side coming down, goes with CD. I think it goes correctly together just like that in order. So this is the definition of a midpoint. We know this because that's what a midpoint means. It means it separates into two equal parts. And it looks like the last thing I have to worry about is how does this AB is parallel to CE help us? Well, there's another really important thing that we talked about when we did chapter three with the transversal. These two lines are parallel this line comes through and cuts them and touches both of them. Well, what's going to happen then is this angle and this angle have to be congruent to each other as well. Because if I were to pick this triangle up and put it on top of this one, they would be in the same spot. So angle BAC is congruent to angle, since I went BAC, I need to go ECD. And these are corresponding angles. And that brings us to the last step, and I was right to separate the given into three pieces. In the last step, you can see that they wanted us to show that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CED. So let's write that. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CED. Taking a look, let's figure out why. I have two angles and a side. Mm, it's not angle side angle, though, because that side's not in between the two sides. It's outside, so it's going to be angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. So these are congruent by A, A, S. And we're coming on down to this last example today. Another one that we're going to fill in completely by ourselves. So let's go ahead and just put the stuff in that we know. The first part of our given says that angle B, A, C is congruent to angle D, E, C. It says that C is the midpoint of A, E. I went ahead and abbreviated midpoint as M, P there. And I know that ultimately step five is going to be that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. And I know that this was given, this was given, and since I'm trying to prove those triangles are congruent, I know that I'm going to put either SSS, ASA, SAS, or AAS there. 
most likely because these notes are about ASA and AAS. I'm gonna put one of those there. All right, let's fill in our picture then. The given told me that angle BAC was congruent to angle DEC. So BAC and DEC, perfect, I'm gonna put those in. It told me that C is in the middle of AE. Well, that gives me a dead giveaway, midpoint. If it's in the midpoint of AE, I know C to A and C to E are the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and write my congruency statement for this, for AC and EC being the same. If you get confused and you're like, oh, I don't know which one goes with which, look at the bottom statement. They already did the hard work for you here. I know that A goes with E and C goes with C. So I know for this part, I'm gonna put AC is congruent to EC, and that's the definition of midpoint. Well, I'm looking like I'm pretty close. The other piece here is like a hidden piece, a special piece that we wanna make sure we remember. We know these two angles are vertical angles. So I know that I have a vertical angle pair here. So ACB, angle ACB is congruent to angle ECD. Again, you could always look in the bottom if you're confused. ACB, so ECD, gotta make sure we line it up. We know these are vertical angles, so that's my reasoning, vertical angles. Which brings me to this last part, I gotta pick my statement. In this case, I have an angle, an angle, and a side in between them, so that's gonna be angle, side, angle. So A, S, A. And I've got my last proof done. Hopefully this helps catch you up and, and make proofs make a little bit more sense. We got one more page of proofs after this, and then we can start putting it all together. Uh, thanks so much. If you need any help, please let us know. Bye.